Hello everybody, Chaplain Bob here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. If there's any problems with the uh, audio in the series, let me know, will you? I have a new mic, which I don't even think is as good as the old one I used to have. I don't even know where it's at, but... Uh, Believe it or not, I got three microphones. Two of them are in Arkansas, and I have no access to them. Thank you uh, to a goat that, uh, well, I should say a wolf that was in sheep's clothing. That fooled me, but uh, I don't know. That's the way it goes. All right, well, let's go. This is going to be Angels Part 4. And like I've said, that um, Genesis is the foundation of the Bible. So let's go to Genesis chapter 28. All right, verse 1. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not, thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Padanaram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. Now the word Laban means white. Sorry, black Hebrews. What can I tell you? And God Almighty bless thee, and make thee fruitful, and multiply thee, that thou mayest be a multitude of people, and, and give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee, and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land, wherein thou art a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Padanaram, unto Laban, son of Bethuel, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's, and Esau's, mother. When Esau saw that Jacob had blessed, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, when Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padanaram to take him away from thence, that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge saying, thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan, and that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother and was gone to Pada Nanaram. And Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father, then went Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the wives which he had Mahalalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebajoth, to be his wife. Now, Esau had already married two Canaanite wives. Uh, women, well, they were specifically of the tribe of of uh, Hittites. You know, the Canaanites were like America, and then the Hittites were like a a sub group. You know, like you could say, oh yeah, people from California are Americans, people from Texas are Americans, people from Florida are Amer uh, Americans, people from New York are Americans. Well, the Canaanites were like the Americans, but then the Hittites and the Hivites and the Amorites, they were all like states, I guess you could say, their own little group. So here it is, Esau went to Ishmael, the father of the Arabs, and took a wife. Now, I'm of the opinion that the Saudi royal family are of this line, the Ishmael-Esau line. I could be wrong. I don't know. Of course, they lived among the Canaanites, so they had a lot of opportunities to marry into the Canaanites. But, uh, you know, that's just my opinion. And until the Lord returns in glory and I can ask some questions, I could be wrong. But I don't think so. You know, I always find it funny that uh, the... Uh, 
the United States is always so cozy with the Saudis, and um, they never make any problems for the uh, you-know-whos in the Middle East. So, All right, verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran, and he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night. Because the sun was set, and he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. Stones for pillows, huh? Uh, you know what, people? There is a legend that the stone of scone in English, England, the coronation stone, is these, uh, one of these stones. I don't know how true it is. Maybe it's just a story, but it wouldn't surprise me. They call it Jacob's Pillar. All right, verse 12. Yeah, you can look it up if you're interested. And he dreamed to behold a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Ah, now that's, you were probably wondering, why is he reading all this stuff? Ah, okay, here it is about the angels. And he dreamed to behold a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it. All right, so in verse 13, and behold, the Lord stood ab above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy, uh, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee shall thy seed and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Well, guess what? The whites went to the north, Europe. They went to the east, Russia. They went to the west, America, Britain. And to the south, South Africa. And can anybody show me where... The black Hebrews have blessed anywhere that they've ever gone. Can somebody show me that? I would very much like to see that. Or show me where the um, is Ray lies in the Middle East. Show me where they have blessed anyone. Ask the Pal Palestinians. Uh, how blessed they are. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and I will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place! There is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. Um, pouring oil, that was you know, kind of a uh, symbol of the Holy Spirit it was consecrating oil. Okay. Uh, let's see. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city was called Luz at the first. Now, Beth means house, and E-L is a... Uh, kind of a way of saying God. So it, it basically, Bethel means house of God. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, 
If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I will come again to my Father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Now, Jacob went to uh, Laban's house, and uh, he served him a bunch of years for his two daughters, which became his wives. And he took care of his uh, animals, his cattle and what have you, I guess. And um, the Lord blessed Jacob. So here it is after uh, there's some problems and then uh, Laban wasn't happy with Jacob like he used to be. So Jacob decided to go back home with his wives and uh, the animals that Laban had agreed upon to give it to him. And uh, Laban was uh, didn't honor the things that he said to him that he he changed his wages so you could read the story by yourself i'm just trying to cover the parts where um, the lord and the angels speak so let's go to genesis 31 and he heard the words of laban's sons saying jacob hath taken away all that uh, was our father's and of that which was our father's hath he gotten all this glory. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock, and said unto them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not toward me as before, but the God of my father hath been with me. And ye know that with all my power I have served your father. And your father hath deceived me and changed my wages ten times, but God suffered him not to hurt me. If he said thus, The speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled. And if he said thus, the ring straked shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring straked. Thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up mine eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring straked, speckled, and gristled. And the angel of God, and the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, Here am I. And he said, Lift up now thine eyes, and see all the rams which lipped, leaped upon the cattle were ring straked, speckled, and gristled, for I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowest a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out. From this land and return to the land of thy kindred. Now, an important point here is in verse 11. It says, And the angel of God, sometimes called the angel of the Lord, uh, spake unto me in dreams, saying, Jacob, and I said, Here am I. Um, and he said, Lift up thine eyes and see all the rams which leapt upon the cattle are ring straked, speckled, and gristled, for I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. Verse 13. Now, he's speaking in the first person here. He says, I am the God of Bethel. So here it is, this angel of God, sometimes called the angel of the Lord, is, you know, speaking in the first person. I am the God of Bethel. So, angel basically means messenger. And a lot of people think that the angel of the Lord was pre-incarnate Christ, which wouldn't surprise me. I'm of that opinion, too. 
But, uh, you know, when you get an angel speaking in the first person saying, I am the God of Bethel, well, I, it's got to be pre-incarnate Christ. Verse 14, And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted of him as strangers? For he hath sold us and hath quite devoured also our money. For all the riches which God hath taken from our fathers, that is ours, and our children's, now then, whatsoever God hath said unto thee, do. And Jacob rose up and sent his sons and his wives, set his sons and his wives upon camels. And he carried away all his cattle and all his goods, which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting, which he had gotten in Pada Nanaram, for to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. Images. You're talking about idols. So evidently he was an idol worshiper, even though he was of the correct seed line. And Jacob stole away unawares to Laban the Syrian, in that he told him not that he fled. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river, and set his faith face toward the Mount Gilead. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled. And he took his brethren, brethren with him and pursued after him seven days' journey, and they overtook him in the Mount Gilead. And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night. So here it is. God's going to talk to Laban in a dream and said unto him, Take heed, in other words, you better pay attention. Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad. You better pay attention to what you uh, have to anything to do with Jacob. That's that's you know he's he's laying he's laying down the the law here. Then Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount, and Laban with his brethren pitched in the mount of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, What hast thou done, that thou hast stolen away unawares to me, and carried away my daughters as captives taken with the sword? Wherefore didst thou flee away secretly, and steal away from me? And didst not tell me that I might send thee away with mirth, and with songs, with tabret, and with harp? And hast not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters. Thou hast now done foolishly in so doing. It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. But the God of your father spake to me yesternight, saying, Take thou heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. And now, though thou wouldest needs be gone, because thou sore longest after thy father's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my God's? Well, that was the images, people. You know, she stole his his uh, images. Gee, you stole my gods. Oh, is that foolish or what? And Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, Peraventure that thou wouldest take by force thy daughters from me. With whomsoever thou findest thy gods, let him not live before our brethren discern Thou that is thine with me, and take it to thee. For Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. And Laban went into Jacob's tent, and went into Leah's tent, and into the two maidservants' tents, and he found them not. Then went he out of Leah's tent, and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the images, and put them in the camel's furniture, and sat upon them. And Laban searched all the tent, but found them not. And she said to her father, let it not displease my Lord that I cannot rise up before thee, for the custom of women is upon me. And he searched, but found not the images. In other words, she said, um, I can't get up, it's that time of the month. And Jacob was wroth and chode with Laban, and Jacob answered and said to Laban, What is my trespass, what is my sin, that thou hast so hotly pursued after me? Whereas... Thou hast searched all my stuff. What hast thou found of all thy household stuff? Set it here before my brethren and thy brethren, that they may judge betwixt us both. 
This twenty years have I been with thee. Thy ewes and thy she-goats have not cast their young, and the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. That which was torn of beasts I brought not unto thee. I bear the loss of it. Of my hand didst thou require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Thus I was in the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from mine eyes. Thus have I been twenty years in thy home. I serve thee fourteen years for thy two daughters, and six years for thy cattle, and thou hast changed my wages ten times. Except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had been with me, surely thou hadst sent me away now empty. God hath seen my affliction and the labor of my hands, and rebuked thee yesternight. And Laban an answered and said unto Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and these cattle are my cattle, and all that thou seest is mine. And what can I do this day unto these my daughters, and unto their children, which they have borne? Now therefore come thou, let us make a covenant, I and thou, and let it be a witness between me and thee. And Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar. And Jacob said unto his brethren, Gather the stones, and they Get, took stones and made a heap, and they did eat there upon the heap. And Laban called it Jagar Shadhadutha, but Jacob called it Galid. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between me and thee this day. Therefore was the name of it called Galid. And Mizpah, for he said, The Lord watch between me and thee when we are absent one from another. If thou afflict, if Thou shalt afflict my daughters, or if thou shalt take other wives besides my daughter, no man is with us. See, God is witness betwixt me and thee. And Laban said to Jacob, Behold this heap, and behold this pillar, which I have cast betwixt me and thee. This heap be witness, and this pillar be witness, that I will not pass over this heap to thee, and thou shalt not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me for harm. The God of Abraham and the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge betwixt us. And Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac. Then Jacob offered sacrifice upon the mount and called his brethren to eat bread. And they did eat bread and tarried all the night in the mount. And early in the morning Laban rose up, kissed his sons and his daughters, and blessed them. And Laban departed and returned unto his place. All right, Genesis chapter 32, verse 1. And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau his brother unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye speak unto my lord Esau, thy servant Jacob, saith thus, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. And I have oxen and asses, flocks and men servants and women servants. And I have sent to tell my Lord that I may find grace in thy sight. And the messengers returned to Jacob saying, We came to thy brother Esau and he cometh to meet thee and 400 men with him. That, uh, those of you that were in the military, 400 men is two companies. That's like half a battalion. That's a really large, that's an army, people. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that were with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two bands and said, If Esau come to the one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord which saith to, unto me, Return to thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I am become two bands. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. And thou sayest, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. And he lodged there that same night and took of that which came 
to his hand a present for Esau his brother, 200 she-goats and 20 he-goats, 200 ewes and 20 rams, 30 milch camels, uh, which is funny, milch, M-I-L-C-H, it's old English for milk, uh, but it's actually a German word. 30 milch camels with their colts, 40 kine, K-I-N-E, that's an old English word for cattle, and 10 bulls, 20 she-asses, and 10 foals. And he delivered them into the hand of the servant, every, every drove by themselves, and said unto his servants, Pass over before me and put a space between drove and drove. And he commanded the foremost, saying, When Esau, my brother, meeteth thee, and asketh thee, saying, Whose art thou, and whither thou goest? And whose are these before thee? Then thou shalt say, They be thy bro uh, servant Jacob's. It is a present sent unto my lord Esau. And behold, also he is behind us. And so commanded he the second and the third, and all that followed the drove, saying, On this manner shall ye speak unto Esau when you find him. And say ye moreover, Behold, thy servant Jacob is behind us, for he saith, I will appease him with the present, that goeth before me, and afterward I will see his face, peradventure he will accept me. Wow. So went the present over before him, and himself lodged that night in the company. And he rose up that night, and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons, and passed over the ford Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. But Israel, for as a prince thou hast power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. So evidently Jacob is wrestling with either an angel or God himself. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. Now the um, you-know-whos in their magic books, uh, the Kabbalah, Kabbalah, um, they have a thing that if you know the name of an angel, that you are his master and you can control him. So if you got an enemy, you can send that angel, command them by knowing their name, and send them to kill your enemy. Really? My name's Bob. See if you can command Bob to do something ungodly by using my name. And angels are far more powerful than humans are in the flesh anyways and they actually believe this dribble so all right and he blessed him there and jacob called the name of the place peniel for i have seen god face to face for i have seen god face to face and my life is preserved and he passed over peniel the sun rose upon him and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank that is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank. All right, all blessing, praise, glory, and honor to the God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, in his precious name. Amen.